Hello and welcome to our Elliott Wave Training Series for Beginners Part 1. My name is Jacob Gabbard and in this video you will learn the origins of Elliott Wave as well as the different types of waves you will use to analyze the stock market. This is Invest with Jacob. First, let's talk about the origins of Elliott Wave Theory. These are important concepts to understand because to the layperson, Elliott Wave Theory may seem like voodoo or magic. However, to people who have studied its craft and understand what they're doing, they know that Elliott Wave Theory is rooted in science and math. In the 1930s, Ralph Nelson Elliott discovered that stock market prices move in predictable patterns that were repetitive in form. He called this the Wave Principle. Now, the Wave Principle is governed by man's social nature. And social nature is generated in forms that are repetitive and thus can be measured and have predictive value. He also discovered that the path of price is not driven by the news. This is a concept that's very important to understand. How many times have you seen a company have a great earnings report and blow it out of the water only to see their stock sell off the next day? Or how many times have you seen things like the Fed announces highest inflation in 40 years and the market hits new all-time highs? Or the inverse, where the Fed announces they have to raise rates or some other form of bad news hits the market, yet it makes new all-time highs. It is when you step back and objectively look at the news cycle that you understand that it truly does not drive the market. The market moves in predictable waves that can be measured. Because of this revelation, Elliot was able to give a complete, detailed description on how markets behave. Now, if this is starting to sound like voodoo or magic, as I mentioned, there have been many studies done on the subconscious mind and the stock market that all bear out this same result. And that is that man's subconscious mind drives them into a herd behavior, especially in the stock markets. Now, Elliott Wave is also rooted in math, and we will get into that in later videos when we discuss the Fibonacci levels. The Fibonacci levels give us predictable targets of where we should see reversals in the market. Now, as we mentioned, Elliott called these moves in the stock market waves. So let's start looking at the different types of waves Elliott was able to find. All right, I know that material is a little bit dry, but it is very important to understand the origins of Elliott Wave, especially the fact that news doesn't drive price. If you want to be great at Elliott Wave, it is far more important to study the waves, the Fibonacci levels, and how they interact with each other than it is to worry about Russia or China or the Fed or anything else. So let's get into the backbone of Elliott Wave theory, the waves. In its most simplest form, Elliott Wave theory has two wave types, impulsive or motive waves and corrective waves. Okay? Impulsive waves is what we'll start with first. Now, impulsive waves are five-wave movements on trend with the market. Now, what does on trend mean? Well, that means if we're in a bull market, those waves should go up. And if we're in a bear market, those waves should go down. Now, as I mentioned, they are a five-wave pattern, and they are labeled with either numbers or Roman numerals, and they look like this. So you have a wave one up, a wave two retrace, a wave three up, a wave four retrace, and a wave five up. This is what an impulsive wave looks like in a bullish market. You have waves one, three, and five that are on trend called motive waves. Okay, so we're in a bull market, so they're going up. And then you have two counter trend waves, waves two and waves four, that go against the trend of the market. So they are going down. Now, there are some cardinal rules to impulsive waves, okay? The first rule is that wave two can never be lower than wave one. So if you have wave one up, your wave two can never come back down lower than the start of wave one. This is not a valid Elliott wave as wave two has now gone lower than wave one, okay? The second rule is that wave three cannot be your shortest motive wave. So out of waves one, three, and five, three cannot be your shortest. So if you're looking at a five wave pattern and it looks like this, where you have one, two, three, four, five, that is not a valid Elliott wave because wave three is the shortest out of one, three, and five. So that's rule number two. Rule number one is that wave two can't go below wave one. And rule number two is that wave three cannot be your shortest mode of wave. The third cardinal rule of Elliott wave mode of waves or impulsive waves is that wave four can never enter wave one territory. So what does that mean? Well, that means if you've got wave one up and then you got two down and then you got three up, this wave four can never come down 
into wave one territory here. If it does, this is not a valid Elliott wave. Now, there are some exceptions to this rule. They are called diagonals, and they are a little bit more advanced for, than this video will allow. We will have another video on that rule exception. In general, wave four should never invade wave one territory. Okay, so that's our three rules. Remember, wave two can never be lower than wave one. Wave three can never be your shortest mode of wave. And wave four can never enter wave one territory. Now, one key feature of Elliott waves is that they are fractal in nature. And this goes for all types of waves, impulsive and corrective. Okay, now what does fractal in nature mean? Well, we have a wave one up, right? But to make that wave one, this wave one subdivides into one of these five wave structures. So in order to make wave one, you would have a wave one up, a wave two, a wave three, a wave four, and a wave five that would make up that wave one. Okay, and then you would get a corrective wave, which we'll talk about in just a minute, down. And then this wave three would be made up of five waves. Okay, and it would have a wave one, two, three, four, five up. And then you have a corrective wave. And then again, wave five would also be made up of five waves. Now, not to get too complex because Elliott wave does get very complex very quickly when you start really digging in and uh, getting down into the micro counts. But this wave one down here, this little wave one also subdivides into five waves and so on and so on. So when you say it's fractal in nature, it means that when we're looking for a wave one up of a larger degree, we need five subwaves to qualify to make that wave one. We'll get into how that works out in another video, but just understand that every wave breaks down into a smaller version of itself. Okay, so that is the basic tenets of impulsive waves. Now, corrective wave is a three wave structure that is counter trend to the market. So if those impulsive waves were going up, we would expect our corrective wave to go down and you would see an A, B, C pattern. Corrective waves are labeled with letters instead of numbers, so we can identify them easier. And they are three wave patterns and not five wave patterns. So a corrective pattern is always gonna be an ABC. There are a couple exceptions to that that we will get into in later videos. But for basic Elliott wave rules, it is a three wave pattern. So if we grab an impulsive wave and draw it here, you would have your five wave structure, okay, followed by a three wave corrective pullback. And then you would look for another five wave structure up. And this would be considered a complete Elliott wave cycle. So that's it. If you can count to five and do your ABCs, you can do Elliott wave theory. Now, obviously it's going to get more advanced than this, but by knowing its origins and the two basic wave types, you're off to a good start. In part two, we'll start digging into the impulsive waves and how they work.